We are back at Bogey Lanes for the second and final string of the finals match in this Women's Pro Series event. And Lynn Thompson comes right out of the blocks with a strike, just as she did in the first string. Take a look at that, just solid in the 1-3 pocket. So her team trails by 17 after one string. So that's a good way to start making up the difference. Marion Johnson with an eight drop, leaving a four, eight. Piece of wood out front that might be a little tricky, but she's probably just gonna have to go right at it. And, and it goes. So it's a spare for Marion in the first box. Lynn Thompson, as I mentioned previously, is the state Massachusetts All Events Champion for 2011. She also won the 20 string Lita Simino Memorial Tournament at Lita Lanes last summer, so she'll be defending that title this year. And that's spare on strike for Lynn Thompson. This one goes a little bit high in, on the 1 3, but the 3 pin catches the 6 and then comes off the wall to get the 10. So that's two marks in a row to start the second string. Marion Johnson with the four horsemen left. She gets three out of four. Missing the head pin, she'll be trying to clean it up for a 10. And she does. Lynn Thompson filling the spare, and she has got five. That gives her 35 after two. That cuts seven pins off the 17 pin lead. And she goes by the head pin, just taking out the eight pin. Marion Johnson with a six drop, and she's got three, five, seven, and ten with a piece of wood behind the three pin that might enable her to do something, but she actually just went too far right. Didn't, didn't uh, hit the three pin. Lynn Thompson with a 10 box. She runs down the four horsemen right side again. Marion Johnson with an eight in the third. And another one three pocket hit. But Lynn Thompson leaves the 5 7 10. A piece of wood that um, is out in front of the five, approximately you know, on the three pin spot. She's probably going to have to go high on this. It's going to be very difficult to, to cover all three of these. And she gives it a good try, but is not able to get the seven pin. Marion Johnson was also on the head pin, punching out a spread eagle. So she'll be trying to work that out. And she's got a nine. So they head into the fifth box. And Lynn Thompson hits the one three pocket solidly once again and drops nine, leaving the four pin. Plenty of wood in front of it. It's probably not going to present any trouble. Meanwhile, Marion Johnson with a five, six, actually no, the six pin went down, so it's just a five and seven. Piece of wood in front of the five that might, she might be able to use it. And she tried to go to the left end of that wood and get the ball to take out the, uh, seven pin while the wood covered the five, but the ball just didn't quite catch the seven pin. So it's a nine. And Marion Johnson with a 52 half, and as you can see, Lynn Thompson 65 with a ball working. So that cuts it to just a four pin lead, and Lynn will have that uh, spare fill. So it's essentially a tie game with the 17-pin uh, deficit that they had coming in. Lynn Ward 
dropping four on the left side, and Kim Pelletier also missing the head pin to the left. She drops six. And a nice bid by Lynn Ward, getting everything but the five pin. And Kim Pelletier converting that spare. Taking a look at the replay, you'll see that the ball actually takes out the one, six, and ten. It comes off the wall after it knocks down the six and gets the ten. That's a spare for Kim Pelletier. And Lynn Ward will have a nine. Kim Pelletier is going to want to put a big fill on that spare in order to keep her team in the game. As Lynn Ward drops 7, leaving a 3-4-6 split. And Kim just punches out the 3-pin. Didn't miss the head pin by much, but uh, as can only happen in candle pin bowling, she took out the 3-pin by itself. Try and work it out. And she's still got five left, so she'll be looking for an out here. Lynn Ward with a nice shot for a ten. Kick the three into the four. And Kim ends up with an eight in that box. So the spare kind of goes to waste as uh, she just gets a one fill and then an eight in the box. So onward and upward. And Lynn Ward with a five drop and she has one, four, seven, nine, and ten. Meanwhile, Kim dropping six. <clears throat> she has six, seven, nine, and ten. A couple pieces of wood in that six, nine, ten triangle that might make it doable. And there is a great shot by Lynn Ward for the spare. Let's take a quick look at this in slow motion. She hits the right side of the head pin, ball goes over and takes the 10 and knocks it off the wall. And into the 9 pin. Meanwhile the head pin goes to the left and takes out the 4-7. That's a terrific spare. Yeah, not to be outdone, Kim Pelletier with the spare on that 6, 7, 9, 10. And as you can see, she utilizes the wood to uh, go over and take out the 7. Stay right with Lynn Ward. So they'll both be filling spares. And Lynn with 5. <clears throat> leaving a 2, 4, 5, 8 bucket plus the 10. Bucket or a diamond if you prefer. Kim Pelletier with 6, leaving the 4 horsemen left side, 1, 2, 4, 7. And a nice bid by Lynn Ward to try to convert that spare. She got the 2, 4, 5, and 10, but nothing touched the 8 pin. So, she'll have an open box, as will Kim, and Lynn Ward takes a 9. Kim Pelletier will have, oh, it's going to be an 8. with a, another 1-3 pocket hit. A little bit light, but she has the 4-10, uh, which are uh, several feet apart, but there's a nice piece of wood behind and to the right of the 4 that she might be able to use to get the 10. Let's see if she can do that. Yes, she goes right on the 4-pin. Let's take another look at it. She hits the four pretty solid and that piece of wood behind it 
goes over and covers the 10. Nice shot. Kim Pelletier looking at four, five, seven, and 10 with some wood. And she gets the five and 10, but that's really a difficult split. So she's still left with the four, seven. And she and um, Lynn Ward will give way to Cindy Colley on lane one and Jill DeRoche on lane two. And as you can see, well, the scoreboard says five, that it's a five pin lead, but it's really 15 the other way because those spares have not been added in. So the team of Jill DeRoche, Lynn Ward, and Lynn Thompson are actually leading by 15 plus the two spare fills. And since they were down by 17 coming in, they're still down too, but with the two hits, they'll undoubtedly take the lead. Meanwhile, Jill DeRoche and Cindy Colley will both be open to start. Jill with a 10 box, Cindy with a 9. Jill with a, a nice one-two pocket hit, but she has the five and seven. A couple of pieces of wood to the right of the five pin and sort of in front of it. She might be able to hit, catch the cap of that first wood. And she doesn't quite do it. She was over on the five pin, so she wasn't able to use the wood to uh, kick the five over into the seven. She will take a 10, and Cindy will take an 8. And Jill drops 6, leaving the 2, 4, 5, and 7. Let's take a look at this, the trajectory that this ball takes. You, you can see where she releases it. It looks as though it's going well to the left of the head pin but with the rotation she puts on the ball, it has a considerable left to right motion on it. And by the time it gets to the head pin, it's on the right side in the one three pocket. And that rotation she puts on the ball is probably a big part of the reason why she generates so much pin action. And Jill is not quite able to make the spare. Meanwhile, there's a nice shot by Cindy Colley, converting the one and four. Let's take a look at this. She goes to the right side of the head pin. It's the head pin kind of high and there's a piece of wood behind the head pin that takes out the four. So that's a spare for Cindy Colley. And a 10 for Jill DeRoche on lane two. And this time Jill hits the head pin once again, a little bit toward the one, two, so, and let's see. That seven pin is gonna go, so instead of a split, it's just a two pinner, three and six. Took a while for the four and seven to go, but that gives her a makeable spare, just like that. Cindy Colley working on one, three, six, and eight, just Slid by the head pin a little bit, taking out everything but the head pin, so she'll be open. And Cindy takes a 10 box. Jill DeRoche working on that spare. A little bit high on the head pin once again, dropping five, leaving a big five. Cindy Colley dropping eight with a two pinner. Two, four. And Jill, trying to convert that big five, just goes by the two pin slightly. Cindy Colley picks up the two, four. She'll have a spare in the fifth. And Jill DeRoche will take a nine. So that will bring up Lynn Thompson and Marion Johnson as they switch sides. Lynn's team finishing on lane one and Marion's team on lane two. Marion with 
a 9 drop, leaving just the 5 pin. Lynn hits the head pin but punches straight through the middle. Spread eagle. Marion Johnson has been very reliable on those routine spares and she continues to make short work of them with the uh, conversion in the sixth and that's quite important. Lynn Thompson with an eight after that spread eagle. Marion Johnson needs a big fill on that spare. You don't want to let Thompson Ward and DeRoche get too far ahead of them. And that's a, another nine drop for Marion. This time she's got the four pin. Lynn Thompson with five. And a tough split, but a piece of wood that might give her a little bit of help. She has the two, four, five, and seven cluster over on the left, plus the ten pin. Marion Johnson converts that four pin. Two spares in a row. And you can see that was a nice piece of wood that Lynn had there. But she had to hit the two pin in order to convert the spare, and she just slid by it. So it'll be a nine box. Marion Johnson, just four on that second spare. That's a little disappointing because she needs to, really needs to keep that string of marks going at this point. So let's see what she can do with this four drop. And that is a nice try. Really put the ball solid on the right side of the head pin, but just wasn't quite able to carry that eight pin. And there's a spare by Lynn Thompson. Once again, you'll see she hits high on this piece of wood and it covers the seven and eight. Another nice spare. And Marion Johnson will take a nine. Marion with another solid one three pocket hit leaving the 5-8. Lynn with a 9 fill on the spare. She's got the 4 pin. And Marion just fades it just past the 5 pin a little bit. That's a kind of a costly miss right there. So it'll be an 8 for Marion and Lynn Thompson picked up the spare. Marion drops five with the first ball, similar leave to the one she had a couple boxes ago. One, three, five, eight, ten. Again, this is going to require a pretty high hit on the head pin. Let's see if she can do it. And that's another nice bit but it's tough to get that the head pin to go back into the 5-8 territory. You really have to hit it solid. Or hit it very light and have, have the head pin come off the wall. In any case, it'll be a 10 box for Marion Johnson. And Lynn Thompson will finish with a 9. Lynn has a 131 game and Marion with a 112. And they will turn it over to Lynn Ward and Kim Pelletier. Kim with a five drop. And Lynn with a four. Both to the right, going to the right of the head pin. Let's see what Kim Pelletier can do with this. Again, she goes a little bit to the right of the head pin. She needed to push the head pin straight back. There's a piece of wood behind it that might have helped. And again, on uh, on lane one, you can see the a one-two pocket hit, and the ball was deflected around the four and seven. Kim Pelletier gets a ten box. It's not the cleanest one ever, but she'll take it. And 
Caitlin Ward with a nine. Kim is right back on the head pin, but she doesn't have much to show for it. She's got a two, four, six split. Let's see if she can cut the two over into the six. And as it turned out, she just hit the two pretty much dead center, punched it off the four. Lynn Ward looking at four horsemen right, and good bid there as well, but uh, she was a little too full on the head pin. Kim Pelletier will take an eight, and Lynn Ward will take a ten. left side this time and punches out the half Worcester 2 and 8. Lynn Ward where they drop of 7 leaving the 3, 5 and 9 which is a difficult triangle because you have to push the 3 pin back to have either the, the 3 or the ball go back and take the 9 and see if she can do it. And she does. She hits almost dead center on that 3 pin. And the three just, the bottom of the three just took out the five and the nine. That's a nice spare. Not an easy one to convert. Meanwhile, Kim Pelletier will take a nine box. And Kim is back on the head pin. This time she has a split. Three, six, seven, eight. Piece of wood behind the three that might help. That's a pretty tough one though, she just went by the three by an inch or so. Meanwhile, Lynn Ward is looking at four and seven, two pinner with a piece of wood out front and she's got another spare. So that's really starting to put some, some, uh, some heat on their opponents. She's had a couple of spares in a row. Kim Pelletier with a 7 drop, makeable spare. Lynn Ward with another 8 drop, and she has the 4 and 5 with a piece of wood that I don't know if it's quite covering both pins, but uh, it's certainly a makeable spare. As Kim will be open again, she's got just the head pin. And let's see if Lynn Ward can cover both of these pins. As it turns out, it, the, that wood covered the 5. I wasn't sure if it would, or if she'd have to use the ball to, to get the five. So it'll be three consecutive spares for Lynn Ward. And Kim Pelletier finishes with a nine. Lynn will fill that spare. And then she'll be done for the day. And she puts just three on it, but that's uh, three consecutive spares in any case. And that gives her a 125 game. So that makes... I'm not sure whether it's a 47 or a 60 pin lead. Because of uh, the way the computer doesn't add the spares and the marks until they're full. But in any case, it's a pretty sizable lead for uh, Jill DeRoche, Lynn Ward, and Lynn Thompson at this point. So Cindy Colley is going to need a... Man, that goes. That's a great shot by Cindy Colley. She's going to need a, a really big half here. And you will take a look at this um, four horsemen to the left plus the nine, the notorious Kaliri. And she converts it cleanly, just sliding the head pin off the wall to get the nine. And meanwhile, the, the ball runs down the one, two, four, seven. And there's a nice bid by Jill DeRoche on the one and seven, but she doesn't quite get enough of the head pin to make it take the seven. And she'll have, I think that was a nine box. I think it ball went in the gutter. So Cindy Colley needs a big fill on that stretch. She's really got to string some marks here. And just 
I'm not sure if that's a four or a five fill. So it's not going to be another mark. It'll be an open here. And Jill DeRoche looking at a big five. And she's also going to be open. Okay, and you can see that nine pin was in there uh, behind the three. So that was a four fill. And it'll be a six. And Jill DeRoche with a nine. And I think I heard the foul buzzer. You can see that light went off. Cindy tripped the foul detector. So she's going to have to reset. Meanwhile, Jill DeRoche drops seven. Eight, nine, actually. Yeah, so Cindy Colley did reset the pins, and that's her second ball there, dropping seven. Jill DeRoche with the spare, and Cindy will take an eight box. So with two boxes to go, it's a, uh, it's a pretty substantial lead for the team of Lynn Thompson, Lynn Ward, and Jill DeRoche. Cindy Colley with a nice one-two pocket hit, dropping eight, and Jill DeRoche with a strike. Take a look at this ball as she comes in high flush in the one-three pocket, and ten pins go down pretty fast. Cindy Colley looking at a two-pinner, the six and nine, and she takes it down. Collie working on the spare. And she punches out a half whisker. It's a, been kind of a frustrating match in that respect. But they will pick up a nice check for coming in second in this Women's Pro Series team tournament. Added to her win earlier in the uh, singles tournament up at Park Place. So Cindy hasn't had a bad year at all. And Jill DeRoche will finish with a nine. And they congratulate one another. And you can see the, uh, the winners are Lynn Thompson, Lynn Ward, and Jill DeRoche. And we will take a look at the scoreboard to show the final scores. In the second string, Thompson, Ward, and DeRoche with 375 to 315. And overall, they win by a total of 733 to 690 for the two-string match. So Lynn Thompson, Lynn Ward, and Jill DeRoche are the winners of this Women's Pro Series team tournament.